Now, what I'm going to try and put forward today is that MMOs in general and World of Warcraft, it's not addictive. It's not an addictive thing. The actual way that the game works is by compulsion. You are compelled to play the game for various reasons. Yeah? And funnily enough, a lot of these reasons are actually very healthy reasons to play. And for the next 40 minutes, I want to try and reassure you as to why and demonstrate just why this idea of addiction to a video game is a lot of smoke and mirrors created by mass media. It's a lot of sensationalism designed to sell newspapers, and it's designed to line the pockets of people who run WoW Detox clinics. <laughs> yes, it exists. I kid you not. WowDetox.com. The, the lovely page spread on the front of it that says, don't worry, we can help you for 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 bit. There you go. You know, I, I will cure you of your magical disease that doesn't actually exist. Right. Now, World of Warcraft. Some of you haven't played it. Hopefully, most of you know what it is. The game has, at the moment, over 6 million subscribers throughout the world, yeah? All countries, you know, very popular in Europe, US, Korea, China, everywhere. Regionalized versions available for everybody to play. Why was it so popular in the first place? Yep. But how many people actually played Warcraft? Yep. Quite a few of you. Now, that's great. Because it's a good franchise. But no MMO has ever been so successful. Ever. It's a huge, huge MMO. Over 6 million players. Unheard of. Not only that, but it's starting to make its way into mainstream society. Who watched the South Park episode? <laughs> yep. And everyone found it funny. That's the funny thing about that episode. You as WoW players found it funny. Non-WoW players found it funny because they're laughing at World of Warcraft. And you're laughing because they're laughing. And this integration into modern culture, it's crazy. It's never happened before. And with this comes the idea that this is new technology. A new technology is evil. Because we're a world full of Luddites. We like to destroy everything we see. It's like, this is brand new. We're afraid of it. What can we say about it? Let's take an easy example, Grand Theft Auto. Or anything, in fact, <laughs> released by Rockstar recently. <laughs> Even table tennis. Uh, apparently, I've heard um, there's a secret code where you can turn your table tennis racket into an Uzi and gun down the crowd. <laughs> or at least that's what the mass media will have you believe. It's funny, that. Of course, what's the problem with Grand Theft Auto? Grand Theft Auto, very violent. Questionable moral content. Oh, Lord, a digitized sex scene. We never see that kind of thing on the TV. <laughs> it's never happened before. Now, 20 years ago, it was movies. 30 years ago, rock music. You now, going back, Elvis Presley, all that kind of thing. Previous century, century before that, books. Every new kind of media. Books, novels, corrupting our youth. What's the problem today? Our youth don't read enough books. <laughs> OK. Interesting full circle we've gone there. Now, as far as the game goes, why is it compelling? The game's compelling for a number of reasons. Not least is the people you play it with. Any of you that have played the game know that it's got its faults. No doubt, at one point, you have said, why am I even playing this anymore? Seriously. I've been wiping for six hours on a boss. You finally kill it. There's jubilation. Everyone is like, fantastic, we're beating the boss. Oh, wait, loads, loose boat. Can't have it. You know, we can't get our drops. And you think, what? Why am I playing the game anymore? You know, there's a lot of bad things that happen. The reason you play the game is not because the game is perfect and fantastic, because it's got loads of problems with it. It's actually really simplistic in many ways. But it's the people you play it with. There is no other experience out there that matches it. Matches the feeling of going into a raid dungeon with 39 of your friends. And they are your friends. These are people you've talked to. You know about them. You know, you know their names, you know where they're from, you know what they like, you know their personalities. You've spoken to them either over the game or over voice over IP. And it's the social aspect of the game that ties it together. The very game itself is designed around needing to make connections to people. You can't go very far in that game playing on your own. Blizzard might say you can, because it says on the back of the box. You can play it for 15 minutes a week and you'll get to level 60. Yeah, about three years' time. You'll get to level 60. Now what? Oh, dungeons. Okay. 
Oh wait, I need people for dungeons. I need to make connections to people. A massively multiplayer online role-playing game that requires you to talk to people. Insanity. <laughs> what an insane idea we've got there. <laughs> so, you take your 39 other people into your dungeon. You've got your guild set up. Perhaps it has 50 accounts. Maybe you're a hardcore raiding guild that is uh, down Kel'Thuzad, the hardest boss in the game. Have you? No, she has. She <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, th this is the sound of jealousy coming from here. But, uh, or maybe you've just started out. Maybe you have 200, 500 accounts in your guild. It's just a guild. It's a collection of people that's come together for the purpose of what? Loot, epics, friendship, social activity. That's why these things exist. That's how, what keeps them together. Because why would you play with 39 other people you hate? There might be 20 people you hate. You know, you can hate half the guild, that's fine. It doesn't matter. But <laughs> if you hate the entire guild, how's it supposed to work? It's not. It's not going to work. So you come together and you meet these people. And maybe you might find one or two that you really get along with. And say, hi, how are you? Like, yeah, I'm not too bad. So how's your wife? Like, blah, blah, blah. Talk on, talk on. Uh, would you like to meet up in real life? Does that ever happen? Has anyone actually met up with someone? Say, let's just call across country, yeah? Any great distance, yeah? Okay. And perhaps someone might say, would you like to attend a tech forum? And I say, okay. <laughs> what, would you like me to speak on something? It's like, yes. I, and, oh, yeah, I'm here, aren't I? Um, yeah, so it happens, yeah? You learn about people, and the game is built around people. Now, when was the last time you heard about somebody complaining that uh, someone, someone that they knew was like, that guy's got too many friends. <laughs> We're going to have to take him to a hospital. Sorry, this is an incurable disease. And by incurable, we of course mean that we will cure it, if you give us enough money to do so. But for some reason, doing that over the internet, this wonderful new medium of communication, this way of sharing knowledge beyond the wildest dreams of our ancestors, that's a disease. That's being addicted to a video game because people's idea of video games is, oh, that Space Invaders thing. How can you play that for 16 hours a day? The answer is you don't. Now, one of the complaints that people bring up about World of Warcraft, one of the the things which psychologists say, and I'm going to show you a video a little bit later on by an Australian program called The Current Affair, which has a, a psychologist. And the psychologist claims that 40% of people are addicted to World of Warcraft. Where did that statistic come from? <laughs> no, sorry, 40%, so that's quite a lot. That means that, you know, let's see, how many people have we got in here? Cut the room down about there. Yeah, you're all addicted to WoW, apparently. Also, the Australian media would have you claim. And what, what the psychologist says is, this game would be fine if it had an ending. It has no ending. <laughs> Insane. Because what would happen if you had a book without no ending? It would be the best book ever. <laughs> <laughs> what a price to performance ratio. That book's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you've got an open fantasy world with no ending. Now, people are scared by that idea because that is not something which has existed in the past. People are used to finite forms of media, digestible chunks of media. A TV program, 45 minutes in length. A book, 400 pages. A song, three and a half minutes in length. Digestible forms of media. You turn it on, you turn it off. You go from beginning to end. Easy. You can't get addicted to a novel because by the time you're getting addicted to a novel, you've finished it and you have to buy the next one. <laughs> That's the argument they put forward. That's the argument they say, this is addiction. Why is it addiction? How can you quantify addiction? How many hours a day does it take to be an addict? If I play, say, 12 hours a week, those 12 hours a week are on a Saturday. Okay? I play 12 hours straight. Let's just, this is hypothetical, because I play 12 hours every day, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, <laughs> 12 hours a week, and I do it every week. 
everything that is happening on Saturday gets moved over here, out of the way, to play WoW on a Saturday. Now person B plays WoW for an hour a night, without fail. One hour a night. That's not all that many. That's not, all, you know, that's not a lot of time, at least compared to other people. Who's the addict? Can you quantify it with time? Of course you can't. You cannot quantify being addicted to something by the time. You can be addicted to a drug by only taking one. You, know, you may take one a week, but if you are required to take it, if your body says that you must take it, then that is, you know, that is a chemical dependency. How can WOW be a chemical dependency? WOW is not a chemical. Take, for example, the condition known as being an adrenaline junkie. Yep. I recently read a post, I believe it was on some right-wing conservative site of stupidity, <laughs> that said, bungee jumping, it's the evil in our society. It drives these people to become adrenaline junkies. Bungee jumping, what a dangerous activity because we all know that many people have died due to bungee jumping. No. And they're saying, but, okay, bungee jumping is the cause of being an adrenaline junkie. And how many other activities exactly cause a rush of adrenaline like that? Many. There are loads of them. Same the rush of endorphins. Many, many different things cause a rush of endorphins. It's a good thing. It's the kind of thing you live for. And yet, they're willing to blame the product for that and not the person. So what kind of person gets addicted to an MMO, gets addicted to a video game? What kind of person gets addicted to anything? If you're going to follow the line that there are two kinds of addiction, you've got your chemical addiction and you've got your addiction which the media claims is addiction. You've got your addiction to every possible hobby on the planet. Yeah. Anyone in this room it could be amongst you right now. That person over there could be addicted to airfix models. That person over there could be addicted to stamp collecting. Is that an addiction? No. Of course it's not an addiction. No one would ever claim that that is an addiction. What they would claim is that they... Yeah, a hobby. But a video game can't be a hobby. That's not a hobby. A hobby is one of those wholesome things. Stamp collecting, building model ships in bowls. That's a hobby. It's something physically you can put together. Sports. Sports is a hobby. Playing Counter-Strike, playing World of Warcraft. That's not a hobby. That's something those evil Satan kids do in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a hobby. Well, last time I checked, it was a hobby. We just covered the fact that WoW is an incredibly social game. Now, compared to other hobbies, that's actually a very healthy thing. You talk to people who you would otherwise never have spoken to, people from different cultures. You learn about people. And you have no inhibitions as far as, what does that person look like? What background is he from? You get a first impression of somebody. You get a first impression of me. You might say, I'm a silly spotty geek in a hat. And you would be absolutely correct. <laughs> but over the internet, nobody knows that. And they have no inhibitions. And they speak to me. And they say, Hi. And I say hi back. And we interact. And that's one of the best things that the internet has actually brought to this planet. The internet is actually bringing understanding between cultures. World of Warcraft, with its massive subscriber base across the world, brings understanding between different groups of people. Social activity, social communication. You are taking part in activities with other groups of people. They're not just mindless. They're activities which require logistics, coordination, leadership. They require mathematical skill. They require, not to some degree, hand-to-eye coordination, but they require a precision of action. Anyone here who has done a major raid boss such as Cthun, let's say that for instance, for those who haven't played World of Warcraft, Cthun is a large eye with many hentai-style tentacles coming out of it. <laughs> tentacles. That requires every single person in that group to be 100% focused because if they aren't, they can wipe the raid. You know what it's like having 39 other people pissed at you because you've wiped a raid? <laughs> yeah, of course you do. Yeah. Lightning shield. Yeah. So it's about teamwork. It's about interacting with the group. And that is an incredibly good skill to learn. I heard about somebody who actually 
be someone to a great job in the tech industry, uh, leader of a project. You know why? Because on his resume, it was pretty much the same as his other guys. It says, I led a raiding guild. I'm not kidding. I led a raiding guild. Why is leading a raiding guild so important? Because have you tried controlling 39 other people over the internet who are there for no other reason other than their own? It's nigh on impossible. You're not paying these people. They have no obligations to you. Yet, people do it. Some of you lead guilds. I have no doubt about that. Some of you have tried leading a raid, whether it be 20, 40 people, and it's difficult. And you know it's difficult. And you know the ironic thing about WoW, where you sit behind your computer in total darkness for 16 hours a day, is that it develops people skills. <laughs> <laughs> How do you develop people skills in a video game? Of course, we know why. We understand. We know about voice over IP. We know the benefits of Ventrilo, Skype, TeamSpeak. We know for the fact that we can talk to people over the internet for free, almost instantly, depending on how laggy your server is. We know that we can talk to people in-game. We know that we can add people to a friends list. We know that we can expand outside of the game. We can add people to MSN. We can get their email addresses. We can talk in a chat forum. We can meet in real life. And that's great. The problem is that the media don't get it. And that's actually the way and the real problem we're having with mass media at the moment. We really are. Go back to Rockstar. Let's take Bully, for example. Who's played Bully here? Who enjoyed Bully here and did not feel the urge to go out and murder people? <laughs> oh, the same people. What a surprise. Yeah, the funny thing about Bully was that the actual title itself caused a media ruckus. It's like, oh, it's by Rockstar. You might as well say, oh, it was published by Nazi Germany. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the view that people have of this company. And you know what? I've put a good few hours into that game. I actually wrote an editorial, and you know what I said? If I had kids, I would let my kids play that game. You want to know why? Because it's actually a great moral teacher. Because the media don't want to know that, because that doesn't sell newspapers. <laughs> it doesn't. Sensationalism, hype. Try to bang down on people. Now, in the UK, we have a newspaper called the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail, I, you probably have some kind of equivalent over here. It's a right-wing, well, I'll call it a soccer mom newspaper. Yeah? <laughs> it's the kind of thing that you know, middle-aged housewives like to read while their husbands are away working and get really angry about things they don't know about. It's written <laughs> by the ignorant for the ignorant. We had a front-page spread that says, ban these evil video games. This was about a year ago, by the mind. You know what I had in there? Doom. The original Doom. <laughs> Doom! <laughs> of all things to put in there. And you know what? The actual description of the game was like, um, you are carrying out Satan's work. I'm sorry, the last time I checked and I was playing Doom, I was fighting Satan's work. Of course, <laughs> of course they don't want to know that. Why don't they want to know that? Because it doesn't sell the papers. And they don't want to understand. Because understanding, such an evil thing. It's an evil, it's so much easier to actually bring people under control under the degree of the mass media into buying the paper every single day into believing what they want them to believe by making things simplistic and more importantly, wrong. Now, that's the social aspect, wow. That's the thing which the papers don't get. But there are other things. Now, let me ask any one of you in this room, if you were to come up with one reason that you still play World of Warcraft, why? Now, what's, what's the thing about WoW that keeps you playing? What, what grabbed you? The challenge. Uh -huh. great yep. You know what that is? That is about progressing. It's about progress in a game. And it's about tapping in to what I see as the natural human instinct to advance. Yeah? Everyone, even the biggest failure you know, has somewhere inside them this tiny little urge to advance and better oneself. Wow, and any other MMO, anything which requires you to progress a single character to a level of power, taps straight into that urge. You know, where do you want to be in three months in the game? What kind of gear do you want? Probably 2. My tier 2.5. Yep. AQ40. Okay. Now, that's not top, is it? No. No, it's not. But that's a personal goal you've set yourself. Yeah? 
people set personal goals and they then advance on to them. And when they succeed in those goals, they're very happy about it. They're very pleased. But what's so wrong with wanting to advance oneself? Surely we do it in real life all the time. And surely when we are taking part in our hobbies, taking part in the things that we like to do, suddenly that's so wrong. If you were, say, practicing football, or let's say, just say practicing basketball, your aim is to be able to shoot from however many yards, I don't know your crazy system over here, <laughs> however many yards and hit the basket 100 out of 100. Yeah? 100 balls straight in the basket. If you went to a newspaper uh, and asked the newspaper, what do you think of that guy? Do you think he's an addict? Do you think he is an abnormal social freak? <laughs> They'll say, no, he's a sportsman. <laughs> the moral upstanding fiber of this country. What are you talking about? No, it's exactly the same thing. The thing is, with MMOs and with World of Warcraft and the reason that people actually enjoy them is because that they can see at a glance a marked improvement in their avatar. Their character has a better piece of gear. It looks shinier, hopefully. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't. But hopefully it looks shinier, it looks better. People can see, they've seen that that guy has progressed. He's done something, he has achieved something within this game environment. Surely that is a good thing. You would all think this is a good thing, yes? Not if you agree. Scream and shout if you don't. Oh. <laughs> Question answer time afterwards. <laughs> now, you'd agree that this is all of, you know, a very good thing. The thing is, what the media don't see past, and what a lot of people who are ignorant of the genre don't see past, is the idea of video games are a silly little hobby. They've been around for, well, in the great span of time, a little blip on the radar. They haven't been around as long as books, plays, classical music. And those are all good things. Yes, so the media says. It's all fantastic. When it comes down to video games, they, they do see them as silly. They see them as child's play. They cannot understand how old -er people will actually play these games. Why would you do that? A businessman comes home from a long day at work and sits down to play his orc. <laughs> Someone outside says, what is he doing? Someone who knows what they're talking about, saying, he's relaxing, he's chilling out, he's playing the game. He is taking part in an online social revolution, which involves hacking things to pieces. <laughs> it's brilliant. Killing e-dragons. Yes, killing e-dragons. Slaughter, Slaughter the alliance. Step on gnomes. <laughs> Kick, we can do that too. Hunt the gnome. Should be an epic quest. But yeah, so, and they don't see that. And that's why they believe in this whole farce of addiction. The guy goes home every single night and he plays the game. He is addicted. Come in if you like, mate. <laughs> I think I scared him. What a shame. No, he used to work for the NSA. The what? <laughs> All that made up in some Dan Brown novel. Yeah, so... <laughs> they, they, they see an addict, they see a person who comes home every single day and does this. And yet they see someone that goes out regularly. Say, uh, I go out every Thursday evening to the pub and I go and meet my friends. That's completely normal. I go out every Thursday to Molten Core and I meet those bloody core hounds. And what do people say? That's weird. Why do you do that? Why MC? Yeah, why MC? Because MC is rubbish. <laughs> uh, why do you turn up to these raids? Why do you do it? Why, 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 why? And they can't understand it because they haven't done it. They're not educated in it and they don't want to be educated in it. Now, you'll find the general public are, you know, pretty, they're pretty accepting of new ideas, surprisingly. But they don't get many because the media will say, new technology, it can be used for evil. <laughs> uh, that's what it is. It's, it's all this uh, crazy terrorist stuff. Uh, you don't want to do that. But... It's criminal, in my honest opinion. It really is. It's criminal that people actually backed up by so-called experts can put forward this propaganda, this horrific mess of drivel 
that comes out in the newspaper and the news organisations every single day. Now, what they'll also say is that these companies, these companies that develop these MMOs, they're evil. Why are they evil? Because they are hooking your children onto something which is worse than cocaine. <laughs> evil dragons and Satan rituals and elves and fairies and all this stuff that's they're going to grow up emasculated, not be proper working men. Or dwarves. Women. And women. <laughs> but they won't grow up to be proper working men. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Now, why? The thing is, with this, that the MMO genre as a whole is very susceptible to this kind of criticism. Like I said before, never ending. You can log in any time you like. You can log off any time you like, or not at all. There is no end, there is no finite point at which you say, I will now stop playing the game because I have achieved everything there is in the game. There's always something to achieve, even if it's a player-made goal, if it's not in the game itself. Now, people argue, especially industry analysts, argue that it's the game mechanics. They're designed to hook people in. They start off easy, nice and easy. Level one, in a little starting area. You must go and slay 20 boars. <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> For I must make stew. <laughs> and you go and do it. And it's fine. This is quite good. Hey, I'm now level two. I get a new ability. Hey, I found a ragged leather cloak that's slightly better than my old one. There we go. That's great. Character advancement. Um, that the game apparently gets you hooked into this, and that's the way they've designed it. So all the way up to 60, why are you playing? To level two, whatever level is ahead of you. When you get to 60, does that analogy fall down? No. Why doesn't it fall down? Because you then have raiding. You advance your gear. On and on and on and on. You encounter new challenges which you must defeat. You know, your guild needs to gain reputation among the myriad of other guilds out there. You need to be known as a credible organization, as someone to be taken seriously, as someone that's gone far, skilled, or so they will call it. Now, you could possibly argue that that is deliberately designed to hook people in. It's designed to bring people into the game and keep them there. Oh, wow. Business making money from subscription-based monthly services? What kind of a crazy world is this? <laughs> of course. It, it's to bring people in and keep them playing. It's a subscription-based game. But nowhere in the contract does it say you must play for this amount of time. Because in a game, you set your own personal goals in a game like that. You know, the game in a single player game, the aim of a single player game is to finish the game. And then maybe you might go back and say, I'm going to finish the game on a harder difficulty. I'm going to unlock this new content. I'm going to collect 100 out of 100 rubber bands. <laughs> it happened. But in an MMO, they don't say, you need to do this. No, you want to do this. Why do you want to do this? Because the game tells you to. No, it doesn't. It doesn't actually tell you to do anything. The game is there. You are simply existing within its world. The goals you set are personal goals. You may be egged on by your friends, because that never happens in real life. <laughs> You're egged on by your friends, and you say, OK, I'm going to go and achieve this goal. It's great. I've done it. Fantastic. What's my next goal? But yeah, as, as a business model, it's a quite a sustainable one. Why do you think they're trying to bring out so many MMOs? People are trying to jump on the bandwagon. EA just bought out Mythic, I believe. Yep, uh, they, because they want to get on the MMO bandwagon with a good quality product, hopefully with Warhammer Online. And it's exploding. They're making everything into MMOs because why? You've got a single player game, you've got a development time. Maybe, possibly even two years, but these days that's a bit extreme. And they release the product, they get a fat check from the, re from the wholesalers who have paid them money for the product. Then goes on to the retailers, blah, 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 blah. But with World of Warcraft, that's not the way it works. The money goes straight to Blizzard. It's going out every single month from your bank account. Great business model. Fantastic business model. All you need to do is add in a little more content. It'll keep people playing. With WoW, the thing has spiraled to the case of it's not the game keeping pl people playing anymore. It's the community. The community has snowballed to a huge, sprawling mass of idiocy. <laughs> and within that sp small mass of idiocy, if you clean it all off, there's a little pearl there of nice people a community that creates, a community that thinks, and a community that is generally nice to talk to. A community that keeps you playing the game, the communities within your guilds, the communities within your server. 
with, maybe within your battle group. Maybe it's on a fan site. Maybe you're part of a fan site. Maybe you post on a forum. That's a community. All these little communities, these microcosms of people created inside this big, sprawling, massive a game. And are people really playing the game for the game anymore, or are they actually playing for the community? The answer is a bit of both, because that is the strength of MMOs. That is how MMOs operate, and that is why World of Warcraft is so successful. But is it addictive? Is that addictive? No, it really isn't. From a chemical perspective, it's not addictive. From a psychological perspective, it is not addictive. You're compelled to play the game because it is good and you have friends there. If you were to cut yourself off from the game, it's the same as cutting yourself off from a group of friends. You're saying, I'm not going to talk to you anymore because I'm apparently addicted to your presence. I'm addicted to going out with you and having fun. The irony, it's delicious. You put it on a cake and eat it. It's fantastic. Because you've got your media perception, single loner, whereas in fact, you have open-minded social person. Possibly even more open-minded than the random thug you find down the pub. More than likely, with his group of five friends that like to throw bricks at people. <laughs> and it's not due to playing video games either. What a crazy idea. So yeah, as a business model, MMO, it's a great business model. It's sustainable. People keep playing from month to month. The game mechanics, they're solid. They keep people playing because they have this desire to grow. They have this desire to advance, to build their character up and up and up. I mean, has this ever happened previously in video game history? I don't think of one game. Let's see if anyone knows it. Space trading game, begins with E. Oh, God. Space trading game begins with E, five letters. Since when was Earth and Beyond five letters? <laughs> I know this is a tech university, but seriously, we learn the English. Elite, thank you. Why do people play Elite so much? Because Elite was the first game of its kind that actually didn't have an end. It was about advancing your character and setting a personal goal. What is my personal goal today? I shall take my Cobra Mac 3 spaceship. I shall upgrade it with military lasers. That will probably take me about six hours of trading only to get shot down in the middle of Fargoid space, explode, and have to do it all again. <laughs> Gonna do it, though. Why? Because I actually care about what's going on in that game. That's the kind of thing that makes you care about the game. When you go through an FPS, you generally do not care about the character whose gun you are holding. There's no reason to. Generally, he's a jackass. <laughs> There's no reason. You would not want to be this character. You are, all you're interested in more than anything is the gun. The gun is what matters in an FPS. It's not the person holding it. Yep. Bigger, the better. And when you get to the end of that 10-hour game, you'll say, OK, fair enough. What's the next game I can play? You never got connected to the game. You were just playing it. With an MMO, you get connected inextricably into the game by the people you meet within it. It's a fundamental difference. Even between a standard multiplayer game like Counter-Strike where you may join a random server, you may see random people, you may leave them, and you'll never see them again. You may be part of a clan, a small community, but you don't know that when you go back on that server, the same people will be there because they might have migrated off to another server. With WoW, you have a set server, you have set people, a set population, people you will see every single day. People you actually want to see every single day. You don't want to see them because you are addicted to that game. You want to see them because they are people, because you... As a person, as a human being, are a social animal. It is not natural to simply never speak to somebody. It's unhealthy. It makes your brain go a little bit strange. Now, I promised I'd show you something really rather silly. The footage I'm going to show you right now is from an Australian program called The Current Affair. Now, this footage is ripped from YouTube, so I apologize for terrible quality. But it shows, apparently, a teenager who is addicted to violent computer games. Now, at various points in this, I'm going to stop. I want to ask you what you think of it. And I'm going to rant at it. <laughs> right, let's go it.
may I introduce Mr. Phoenix, right? He'll be my defense today. Now, notice what she said there. Notice the point that there's a couple of points that she accented there. She accented the following points. 16 hours a day, violent mother. Okay? Rearrange these and form a sentence. So, this guy's apparently playing 16 hours a day, okay? And he's playing violent video games as opposed to normal videos. It's okay if you play Pong 16 hours a day, guys. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. You can play The Sims for 16 hours a day. That's absolutely fine. But as soon as there's a degree of violence in it, no, morally outraged. And mother. You've got a little family element in there. Because the mother is, of course, always the victim when it comes to uh, disciplining a child. <laughs> we can see from the start that this is going to be, well, let's just call it drivel, shall we? Cameron Sandler, this is more than a game. It's an addiction and an illness. It's an addiction and an illness. 16 hour a day boy in his tier zero. Yeah. Now, we can obviously see from that, that is well dodgy. I mean, it's, they've managed to find the kid that looks like he has never seen the sunlight in months. <laughs> never. And he never talks to anybody. You know what? He looks like a serial killer. Look at his eyes. <laughs> yeah. The kind of person that would take a baseball bat to a child. <laughs> As the video games told him to. Now, <laughs> it's ridiculous. How much, how much more of this will will the population actually take? How much more will they accept? Well, it's clearly a forged program can be socially acceptable to broadcast on a public TV network. It's ridiculous. I'm addicted to the game, but I'm not fully addicted. Like, I can quit whenever I want. <laughs> <laughs> it all started 18 months ago when Cameron discovered World of Warcraft. Oh, now I'm going to kill you all. millions around the globe. America, Germany, China, all of Europe, England. And you've got friends in all of these places? Yeah. And that's what you refer to them as, your friends? Yeah. <laughs> that's what you refer to them as, your friends. Those little imaginary friends. This is Tim, my imaginary friend. Hi, Tim. Say hello to the audience. Yeah, Tim doesn't like you. Tim's been playing too many video games and is getting very violent and reclusive. I find the idea that they cannot grasp the social aspect behind this game to be infuriating. See, I'm getting violent over a video game already. I'm raising my voice level. I find it appalling that they cannot accept this. Why is this so difficult? Let's go back a bit in time. Did you ever consider a pen pal to never be your friend? Someone who you had, uh, you know, you spoke to long distance over the phone. A distant colleague in a faraway land filled with dragons and evil foreigners. <laughs> Did you ever consider these people to not be your friends? Does friendship require face-to-face -face social contact? No, no. no, of course it doesn't. Why would it? Because that's the nature of a friendship. Friendship is something that can transcend the boundaries of countries. It can go all the way across the world and still remain intact. It's amazing. It's one of the few redeeming qualities we have left as a society. You know, you can have as much killing and violence and horrible, horrible things as you want, but at the end of the day, you're still going to have friends. <laughs> you people. Yeah, everybody. You know, everyone's got a friend, at least one, hopefully. <laughs> but no, they, they can't accept it. Uh, they, can't, they cannot understand how it works and the idea that a video game can be used as a social conduit to the world because that's crazy technology talk. Liberalism. <laughs> They're letting the terrorists in. <laughs> they play simultaneously for hours on end, when they're in fighting and killing their enemies. 
Cameron has up to 500 players on his team, known as a guild. But the longest I've ever played for was 12 hours, and that was um, uh, that was um, just because the guild wanted me on. That was yesterday. Ah, uh, you took my kill. Why do you talk with an American accent when you talk to these people? I don't know. It's probably like you move to a new country or something. You just end up picking it up. <laughs> and that's not all you picked up. <laughs> Swearing on the internet. Unacceptable, morally deplorable, and never happened before the creation of this evil thing. <laughs> what? He picked up swearing, a 16 year old child? How dare he? And how does he do that? He never even went to see. You know. Oh, Lord. I, I, I find it amazing. Uh, if you want to stop the kids swearing, then try and teach them a better vocabulary. The guy sounds like he can't even speak. Seriously, what kind of parenting is that? <laughs> he punches holes in the wall. He hits his keyboard off the table and breaks bottles outside. Wait, he goes outside? What did that happen? <laughs> it's a breakthrough in parenting skills. <sighs> what, what, what are you thinking? How can a parent allow a kid to actually get to that stage? Whose responsibility is it to raise a child? Is it the media's responsibility? I hope not. <laughs> well, that's what some people seem to think. It's the responsibility of the parent to raise the child and teach them What's good, what isn't? You know what? If you ain't played World of Warcraft, some of you may not even be aware this exists. There's actually a parental control system within the game that can stop people playing in certain times. It's incredibly easy to use. Even a monkey like that could use it. <laughs> she could log on there and say, okay, right, you get two hours a day playing at this time, otherwise you are not able to play the game. He might whine, but he's not going to do anything else, is he? Let's face it. It's a kid, he needs to be disciplined, he has not been brought up properly. That is the parents' fault, that is nothing to do with a video game. Absolutely nothing. Denise is Cameron's mum. He started like with this going for an hour, two hours, two hours, turned into four, four, turned into six, six turns into twelve, and he's now into the snowball effect that he's got to play that game. Cameron is often up at four in the morning to begin playing. Sometimes he goes right through the night. His mum estimates that on average, he's in front of that screen 16 hours a day. My choice to play, um, my choice to be addicted to it. Cameron reckons he can stand up and walk away whenever he wants, but try telling that to his mum. Denise believes he's hooked. And just like an alcoholic, a smoker, or a drug addict, getting off <laughs> is going to be an enormous challenge. <laughs> my choice to play it, my choice to be addicted to it. Have you got a question over there? Is she clear for the internet Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because apparently unplugging his computer is far too difficult and interfering with his natural human development as a child. We can't do that. <laughs> what parenting class do you pick that one up in? That's what, the, the real sentence which gets me in that is my choice to play it, my choice to be addicted to it. Isn't addiction a subconscious feeling? It's not, you, you cannot choose to be addicted to something. It doesn't work that way. Surely that's what psychologists have been telling you for a very long time. Addiction is something you break out of and it's painful. It's painful to break out of. Why? Because you don't want to. You don't choose to be addicted. You have to choose to not be addicted. You have to choose to break out of the habit. But if there's no habit in the first place, if there's no addiction, then that's not going to happen. Now, why on earth would this parent actually allow a child to play for that long? One hour turns into two, turns in, two turns into four, four turns into eight. Where do, you br where do you draw the line? Or in this case, we don't draw the line, do we? Because it's easier for the kid to be out of the way, and then I can do whatever the heck I'd like to do. It's disgusting, quite frankly. Regardless of who's right and wrong in this household, 
experts are now warning that addiction to technology is becoming the fastest growing <laughs> illness. <laughs> watch, watch out, guys. How convenient, it doesn't have internet addiction in it. Maybe because there's no such thing. <laughs> There's no such thing as addiction to this kind of thing. You know, it's the same as saying you are addicted to having friends, you are addicted to being a social animal. Yes? Wouldn't uh, addiction to technology also mean I like to turn the lights on when I get home? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, that's Satan talking. <laughs> oh, I'm addicted to technology. Wow. I, a world that uses technology uses it quite a lot because we've been sold it <laughs> quite a lot. Of course, we quite a lot. Yes. So should we start confiscating cell phones? Absolutely. No. Let me just call. Yes. Uh, hello, Satan. Yes. <laughs> what, you want me to sell a purple on the auction house for slightly higher than its normal value? Good Lord. I must go. No. This. No, it's, it's a stupid idea. You know, the reason it's not in there is because it doesn't exist. The reason these people say it exists is because who is lining their pockets but panicked, panicked parents and misguided youth who believe they are addicted to this game when, in fact, no, they're not at all. They just want to play it. News just in, there are chat rooms on the internet. <laughs> Sorry, there are forums on the internet, inter inter what the what? The internet, the intertubes <laughs> that believe, these people believe that they are wolves. I kid you not, I've seen the forums, thousands of people post there, they believe they are a wolf. There are ones dedicated to Star Trek fan fiction which contains things which you really would not want to read, ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these, things, these places exist because they're people that are in the mindset and they've got themselves in the mindset because it's easier for them to be in the mindset. It's easier to be in the mindset and be the victim. This evil company, evil company made me play this game. Actually, uh, we're going to need to wrap it up. Yep. If you want to have some time for questions? Uh, absolutely. I would call that, that is a choice. Why is it a choice? Because let's face it, if you had the alternative between choosing between your 9-5 dead-end job and playing World of Warcraft, what would you actually do? You would of course play WoW. You know? <laughs> Blatantly, obviously you would play WoW unless you are some kind of sadist. You, know, you, you would play WoW and that is a choice that they have actively made. They have fooled themselves into thinking they do not have a choice. You always have a choice. That's one of the useful things about being a human being. We don't act on instinct all the time. Thank you. Next. I want to know is why other MMO players like Final Fantasy XI always brag on WoW. Because they're playing a game which isn't as good. <laughs> uh, a game which involves leveling up to around level 500, a game completely infested by gill sellers and people who will actually take off all their clothes in game and dance for money and people actually give them it. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's your reason, to be quite honest. Uh, they'll, they'll always um, bark at the bigger dog. Uh, it's the way of things, especially on the internet, because there's no recourse. That person isn't going to come and smack you in the face and tell you to behave. 
Yes. Wouldn't it be like uh, with all the mentality of the people speaking? I mean, it's kind of like you know, pre-80s people were born before pre-80s, or all this mm. oh, big monster type deal. Yep. They don't know. So isn't that eventually just going to fade itself out? One would hope so. Yes, but then again, you've still got people claiming that rock music is the devil. You know, this is generations on because the, the problem with if you keep saying this to people, people are going to keep believing it. It will get ingrained. It will be passed down from generation to generation. It becomes ingrained in the society. We've seen it happen with many other things in history. It will continue to happen if people keep coming up with this drivel. It really will. And that's, that's the risk of it. That's the real problem I've got with that. Yes? I'm saying that there is a, always a level of choice. I'm saying that anything of this nature can be addictive to someone who has an addictive personality. The problem with a person with an addictive personality is they can become addicted to almost anything that takes a degree of time. And people have, you know, they bring out the idea that it's addictive because it takes a long period of time, whereas in fact the kind of person that would be addicted to it can be addicted to anything else that would actually take a significant amount of time. Yes, I admit to the level, I admit that some people, uh, yes, I admit that people are, can be addicted to the game in the same way they can be addicted to any other hobby. I'm not saying that it is any more or less addictive, and what I am saying is that people who do not have addictive personalities, which is uh, hopefully everybody in this room, are not addicted to the game, nor will they ever be. Okay? Yes? Yep. We lost six last year in resident play mm -hmm. because they were playing not just WoW, multiple video games. Mm -hmm. They were going to class, yep. you know, playing video they weren't leaving their apartments, mm -hmm. their, you know, health and wellness went down there too. Of course. So it is something that occurred. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and they do have a choice, but it's a responsible game. Yes, so it is. It really is about responsibility. I mean, the university I went to, which is De Montford in the UK, actually had people drop out of our course. I was on the law course. Uh, to start with, there were 120 students. By the f end of the first semester, we'd lost probably about a quarter of those. Some we'd lost due to stress, difficulty of the course. Others we'd lost because they actually just couldn't be bothered to turn up to class for various reasons. It's just another thing that can potentially hurt your academic career. It's something that you should always bear in mind to balance with everything else. Now, a truly healthy human being has a balance of everything. I'm not saying go and play World of Warcraft for 16 hours a day because it's a great social experience and that fulfills all your needs as a human being. It doesn't. You can, as long as you're not sacrificing other elements of your life. It's about being balanced and not about going so far this way that you actually fall off the edge. Any other questions? Yes? Well, the, thing, the problem is, I mean, it, I feel really privileged to be in this room and to actually be able to speak to you guys, intelligent people who will actually listen to what I say. The problem with the internet, while it's a great tool for getting a message out, it's like a huge sea of people all shouting at the same time. And to get your message out, you need an organized group. You literally need to bring these people together. You need to, as a group of intelligent human beings, actually form well, an alliance, if anything, form a guild of people <laughs> who will actually come together and say, this is wrong, I will tackle this on a level and I will, I'm not going to go and rant to the paper because the paper doesn't care. The people who care are the people that read the paper. Get the message out in an organized, mature fashion. You can't argue with that. You can't argue at all. Yes? bring this message out about how video games aren't, well, Satan. Um, the problem there is you're, you're preaching to the choir. I mean, yeah. you're talking to the people who already believe that video games aren't yeah. Satan. That's, that's the problem, isn't it? So, that, so that's, you, if anything, the, me, the evil of the mass media. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to take two seconds and share a story, and that is that um, I had a group of parents and a set of grandparents mm -hmm. sit down and talk to me because they were scared to death of, of their son and grandson, in this case, playing World of Warcraft, and we had a parents' night out. And in the space of about a 30-minute conversation, I got them to understand that, no, their son was not talking to himself in his room with the headset on. He was actually on TeamSpeak. He was talking to other people. Got them to understand the nature of the play and all of the social aspects, and they were much more comfortable with that interaction. 
one of the moms was going home to buy WOW. Nice. There you go. Amen. 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 Message you can. You have to explain to them, yeah. show them the experience. Yeah, you've got to bear in mind a lot of these, the people who actually think this are technophobes. They do not understand the technology. And understanding, that's the thing which is going to get you over the, and through the wall of ignorance. And that's what you've got to, if anything, if you talk to somebody that doesn't know about World of Warcraft and you explain what it's all about, to them, you have lifted the veil of ignorance from their eyes. And they're ever going to see the world differently for that. And it might sound like a small thing. But that person might tell someone else. It'll come up in conversation. It'll tell someone else. It'll tell someone else. You can write as many essays on it as you like, but the only people who are going to read them are people that already agree with them. You've got to literally speak to people, and you've actually got to tell them, this is wrong. Yes? In the expansion out in the next couple of months, they're cutting down the rate size from 40 to 25. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I think that'll actually have a rather significant impact. I mean, my guild recently that fell apart had, uh, you know, one of the reasons it fell apart, and it was a good 70 people. It fell apart because, you know what, I can't raid with my friends anymore because I'm going to have to cut 15 of them out to make a good team. Now, you can, if you wish, play two different teams. You can have an A team and a B team, all, both running 25-man balanced raid content. If you do that, why even bother being in a guild? I might as well have two separate guilds. I think that's going to have a huge impact. I think it's a... It's a negative change. It's something that needed to be in the game, but not like that. You don't just, after years and years of having 40-man raid content as your big thing, then cut it down to 25 and expect people to accept it, because it's going to hurt. It really will. Yes? On the flip side, the, uh, the larger portion of their subscriber base are people that aren't able or haven't found a way yet or aren't really good at dealing with 40 strangers. Mm -hmm. But 10, 10 people, I know 10 people that play mm, Yeah. I, I think it will increase the level of positive social interaction mm. between small groups and more Yeah, I, I would say that that to a degree is true, but you've also got to bear in mind that you've got to try and cater to everyone who's playing your game. And the people who are actually reading the 40-man content and the people who have been playing day in, day out, they are your loyal fan base. You know, while some people have been unfortunate not to be able to experience the 40-man content, in the expansion they're going to be able to because they can level past it and then go back into it. But then they're going to, maybe perhaps you've trained in there, you know, it, there is a degree of skill and knowledge required to play the game. If you've trained in 40-man raid content for so long and then are expected to go to 25 and drop 15 of your players, then I can't see that as being anything other than harmful. You know, there are ways and means of expanding your guild to take on 40-man content. It just might take you a little bit longer. The expansion now gives you that opportunity because you can level past the content, do it easier, possibly reduce the size, maybe not need as great a class balance. Still take 40 people, but not the ideal people. They're far more difficult to find. Yes? Yep. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Yeah. It's, if anything, it's a fantastic way to build relationships with people. And that includes within family. Uh, you play the game with them, you teach them about social interaction, they learn, and they become closer to you. You know, if husband and wife, parent and child, it works. You know, you know that. The problem is most people don't. Yep. Mm. I, to be quite honest, until it becomes integrated into the mass market, until it becomes something that people understand, you know, you don't fear your refrigerator. That's in your home. You know it's in your home. It's only at the point where it becomes a mainstream common thing that people will probably relax their attitude to it. Until that time, it will be the outside thing, as is always the way. I, I think they do have the common sense, but if they're being told consistently by the mass media, which plasters their newspapers and TVs every single day that it's not, then they're more likely to believe that than they are the little voice inside their head. Right, we've probably got time for one final question, do you reckon? Yep, yes, please. When you say the mass media, what do you mean? By the mass media, I mean televised news programs, specifically newspapers, particularly newspapers I find are extremely, they're very, not so much vulnerable, but they do this all the time. They, because it's a cover story, it's about making money, it's about selling newspapers. And that's the kind of thing that certain newspapers, that's the kind of market they appear to, the, you know, the fearful market. 
and there, there is a culture of fear throughout the world right now, whether it be of new technology or whether it be of terrorism or any number of other things. Throughout history, you've seen examples of people who've managed to prey on fear and get a message across that is not necessarily correct. As in, has it demonized it in the eyes of us or in the eyes well, of the mass population? Figures. I'm saying, in other words, doesn't portraying the mass media as a monolithic enemy against the world of Warcraft doing the same thing as you're indicating that they're doing the world of Warcraft back? Yeah, I mean, to some degree, yes. The problem is there is an actual difference between constructively saying, okay, let's break the problem down, let's explain the program, let us give people knowledge of it, as approach, as actually differentiated the approach of the mass media, they do not explain, they do not allow for understanding. This is a common theme, you know, it, and it is all about understanding. The problem is, if you understood everything, then why read the newspaper? If you know what's going on, if you know what's happening throughout the world, why read it? And when it comes to stuff like that, I believe that to some degree you have to fight fire with fire. I do not believe that you can simply stay in silence and say, Mass media is okay, there's no problem with it. I, I don't like what it's saying, but, uh, you know, I don't know, it's okay. You can't say that. I do not believe you can do that. I think in this modern world, a world of communication, a world of people networking, especially over the internet, it is, if anything, people's duty to get their message out there and to constructively take a problem and say, these are the issues. How do we tackle issues? Do these issues even exist? And I believe that contrasts quite sharply to the way that a lot of papers, a lot of news organizations are very, very guilty of putting across a very blinkered, narrow-minded message. And that, I believe, is the difference of what I'm doing here. Okay? Well, thank you very much. Thank you.